Hello everyone. Welcome to MCQ discussion series with me, Sanjay Dekhit. Today we'll be talking about MCQs in pharmacology. The topic we'll be focusing on is antifungal agents. Okay, so coccidates, imitis, and coccidates, uh, posadesi, have been implicated in coccidiomycosis, aka the valley fever, right? So the treatment of choice for coccidiomycosis is amphotericin A, griseofulvin, fluconazole, flucytosin. So which one is it? Okay, the drug out here that is useful is fluconazole, right? Some coccidiomycosis infections will resolve without any sort of antifungal treatment. However, if the infection is disseminated, then it requires antifungal treatment, typically fluconazole and amphotericin B. Amphotericin A, which is given out here, it's not used clinically, so it's a pitfall. Let's look at another question. Which of the following antifungal drugs has only topical action? Fluconazole, itraconazole, plotrimazole, boriconazole. You can see that the three drugs, fluconazole, itraconazole, and boriconazole, they are all triazoles. And triazoles are used for systemic infections normally. Right? So that leaves behind clotrimazole, which is an imidazole. So it's clotrimazole, which has got topical action only. And clotrimazole is used for various infections as creams, and also it comes as antifungal powder. It is, it is even used in case of vaginal candidiasis topically. Okay, so in dermatophytosis, which antifungal drug is not indicated? Graciofulvin, turbinaphine, fluconazole, amphotericin B. Here we're talking about dermatophytosis, right? So these are, the, uh, these are the fungal infections that cause infection in the skin. So amphotericin B is the drug which is not indicated in dermatophytosis because amphotericin B is the first systemic antifungal agent to be discovered and it is among the most toxic antifungal agents that are used and they are not considered for the treatment of dermatophytosis. The antifungal drug Flucytosin is often used in combination with other another antifungal agent and seldom used alone for the development of resistance can occur quickly when used singly. What is the other antifungal agent with which the drug is used in combination? A. Amphotericin B. B. Fluconazole. C. Turbinaphine. D. Ketoconazole. The drug given out here, flucytosin, is basically an uh, anti-metabolite drug. It's very much related to anti-cancer drug, and it's used for systemic infections only. And moreover, because it has got low narrow therapeutic index, it is used in very few number of cases. It has been shown that when the drug is used singly, the chances of emergence of resistance at subtherapeutic level, and again, if given at higher concentration, then there is toxicity appearing very, very quickly. So it has got very narrow therapeutic index, and it is used systemically in combination with amphotericin B. Right. So the clinical use of flucytosin is typically limited to combination therapy with amphotericin B for the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. It shows synergistic activity with amphotericin B. Flucytosin itself has narrow therapeutic index with increased risk of toxicity at higher drug levels and resistance developing at subtherapeutic concentrations.
All of the given drugs can be used for systemic fungal infections except meconazole, isobuconazole, fluconazole, amphotericin B. So which one is that? Amphotericin B certainly is a drug that's used for systemic infection, right? So fluconazole and isobuconazole, these are both triazoles that are used for systemic fungal infections. So it lives behind meconazole. Meconazole is an imidazole and it's used for topical infections only. Have a look at the explanation yourself. We just talked about it. Okay, let us move to the next question. Which of the following is not true with regards to antifungal drugs? Amphotericin B is poorly absorbed from the intestinal tract, so is given only parenterally for system infections. Fluconazole is effective orally as well as intravenously. Graciofulvin is effective orally, and cyclopyrox olamine is effective in systemic mycosis. So here we need to spot out the statement that is not true, right? Is amphotericin given only parenterally for system infections? Yes. Fluconazole is effective orally as well as intravenously. You all know that fluconazole comes as capsule, right? And it also comes as IV solution. So it's used effective in both the ways. Graciofulvin, again, is a drug that is given with fatty foods, so it is effective orally. So that leaves behind cyclopyrox olamine, saying that it is effective in systemic mycosis. Cyclopyrox olamine is, it comes as lotion or, and cream and is effective topically in dermatophytes. So the incorrect statement is cyclopyrox olamine is effective in systemic mycosis. So cyclopyrox olamine, it comes as a 1% cream and lotion for the, treatment, uh, for the topical treatment of dermatomycosis, candidiasis, and tinea versicolor. Okay, which of the following is caused by amphotericin B? Hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypermagnesemia, hyponatremia. If you think about amphotericin B, then amphotericin, the mechanism of amphotericin B, it says that it binds to ergosterol and forms ergosterol associated pores, right? And from the ergosterol associated pores, there is leakage of macromolecules like proteins and intracellular ions, of which potassium is an important one, right? So if there is loss of potassium, then it will lead to hypokalemia. Yes, we are talking about ergosterol, right? And in fungal cell membrane, there is ergosterol, but then ergosterol and cholesterol, they are somehow related chemically. So the same, so amphotericin B would also bind to cholesterol and then it would cause loss of potassium, thereby leading in resultant hypokalemia, even in humans. When used in higher concentrations, it goes to the kidney in high levels and then results in loss of potassium. Induction of treatment in serious systemic fungal infections is mostly done by fluconazole, flucytosin, ketoconazole, and fluterosin B. Out here, earlier, all the drugs listed, they were used for systemic fungal infections. However, ketoconazole, it has fallen into disuse because of severe hepatotoxicity. Many of the, of the countries, they have now banned the use of ketoconazole as a drug for systemic infections. It is only limited for topical infections. Right? Fluconazole, though effective in systemic and fungal infections, it may not be the first choice drug. And again, we said that flucytosin is used along with amphotericin B in certain cases only, like cryptococcal meningitis. So that lives behind amphotericin B, right? 
Amphotericin B is often used as initial induction regimen for serious fungal infections and is often replaced by one of the newer azole drugs. Such induction therapy is especially important for immunosuppressed patients and those with severe fungal pneumonia, cryptococcal meningitis with altered mental status or sepsis syndrome due to fungal infection. Okay, which, is the, which of the following is a broad spectrum systemic triazole antifungal agent? Isabuconazole, lanoconazole, miconazole, laliconazole. Okay, here the question says broad spectrum, systemic, and triazole, right? So there are th three cues that are given out here. All the drugs given are antifungal agents, so you need to consider broad spectrum, systemic, and triazole. We just discussed earlier that miconazole is an imidazole drug and it's used for topical infections only, right? Laliconazole and lonaconazole, lanoconazole, they both are imidazoles again. So they are both again used for topical infections. In fact, laliconazole is the R enantiomer of lan lanoconazole, which is a racemic mixture. And laliconazole is relatively more important as compared to lanoconazole. So this leaves behind isabuconazole, which is relatively newer azole drug, right? It, is, it belongs to the triazole group and it was discovered in 2006. So isabuconazole is the answer out here. Isabuconazole is the newer broad spectrum systemic triazole that was discovered in 2006, right? It appears to be highly active against all Candida species, including species such as Candida glabrata and Candida crusae, which are, which, it also has excellent activity against Cryptococcus gatti and Cryptococcus neoformans. All are effective against Tinea versicola except ketoconazole, griseofulvin, terbinafine, fluconazole. Tinea versicola or tyresis versicola causes discoloration in the skin as a type of dermatophyte, right? So The answer out here is Griseofulvin. Griseofulvin is useful in various dermatophyte infections like Tinea barbi, Tinea pedis, Tinea corporis, Tinea capitis, Tinea croes, and Tinea unguem. However, it is not effective in case of Tinea versicola. Tyresis versicola, also known as Tinea versicola, is caused by Malassezia species. Right? So this is a condition most common in uh, superficial fungal infections worldwide particularly in tropical countries. And topical antifungal medications are first-line agents, including ketoconazole and carbinafine. Okay, the question here. The antimetabolite antifungal agent flucytosin acts by inhibiting which of the following enzymes? Membrane permease, thymidylate synthetase, phosphoribosyl transferase, cytosine deaminase. So which one do you think it is? Here, yeah, all of the enzymes that are given are all connected to flucytosine in some way. Okay, one of them out here helps the drug to enter into the fungal cell. The, out, uh, the option A out here, membrane permease, it helps the drug flucytosin to enter into the fungal cells, thereby exert selective toxicity in the fungal cell. Right? Phosphor cytosine deaminase and phosphoribosyl transferase, they are both required in the activation of flucytosin. And it is the thymidylate synthetase which is inhibited by the drug. 
So flu cytosine is taken up by fungal cells via enzyme membrane permeates. It is converted intracellularly first into 5-fluorouracil under the influence of cytosine deaminase and then to 5-fluorodeoxyuridine monophosphate or 5-dump and fluorouridine triphosphate or FUTP by the action of phosphoribosyl transferase. It then inhibits DNA and RNA synthesis respectively by inhibiting the enzyme thymidylate synthetase. Which of the following antimetabolites acts as an antifungal agent? Paclitaxel, decarbazine, chlorambucil, 5 flucytosin. We've already talked about flucytosin being used in different cases with amphotericin B, right? So the answer out here is flucytosin, all others being anti cancer drugs. So, flucytosin is the fluorinated pyrimidine antimetabolite antifungal drug that is related to anti cancer drug 5 fluorouracil. Introduction of broader spectrum triazoles, foriconazole, transformed the management of invasive mold infections in severely immunocompromised patients. However, foriconazole is effective is still not effective against A, Candida albigens, B, Candida tropicalis, C, Aspergillosis, D, Mucormycosis. Foriconazole is said to be effective against Candida and Aspergillus, right? So the answer out here is Mucormycosis. Mucormycosis is a life-threatening systemic fungal infections. So early recognition, diagnosis, and prompt administration of appropriate antifungal treatment is important for improving the outcome in patients with mucormycosis. Amphotericid B, osaconazole, isobuconazole, they are all effective against mucormycosis. And lipid forms of amphotericid B are often used as first-line treatment. Medications that are active against aspergillus, such as voriconazole, they are not active against mucormycids. And there is some evidence to suggest, suggest that pre-exposure to voriconazole may be associated with increased incidence of mucormycosis in some patients. In addition, surgical debridement or resection of infected tissue is often necessary, and like particularly for rhinocerebral, cutaneous, and gastrointestinal infections. The reference is CDC website of America. The CDC stands for Center for Disease Control. The systemic antifungal agent terbinafine is a keratophilic fungicidal agent that is useful in onychomycosis. The mechanism of action of terbinafine is A. Inhibition of ergosterol synthesis B. Binds to ergosterol C. Prevents formation of purine D. Inhibition of microtubule formation Sorry, there is a typo out here. It should be inhibition in in, uh, in D, right, it's just pointed out as inhibition. <clears throat> so which one is an answer? You know that the mechanism of action of terbinafine involves inhibition of squalene epoxidase, right? So squalene epoxide, the inhibition of squalene epoxidase would lead to the deposition of squalene in higher levels or the accumulation of squalene in toxic levels, thereby leading to death of the fungal cell. And this is related to the inhibition of ergosterol synthesis. Terminafine interferes with the synthesis of lanosterol by binding and inhibiting to squalene epoxidase of sensitive fungi, leading to accumulation of squalene and thereby causing the death of fungal cells. Liposomal amphotericin B has following advantage over conventional amphotericin B. A, lesser nephrotoxicity. B, once a week administration. C, absence of infusional toxicity. D, lesser cost. Amphotericin B, we said that 
it is a systemic antifungal drug and it was discovered back in 1958 right so the problem with amphotericin b is nephrotoxicity again the infusional toxicity because of because of release of cytokines like interleukins and tnf alpha right the cost of amphotericin b is also relatively high it is one of the most toxic drug known when it comes to the whole antifungal drugs so the idea, the answer out here is lesser nephrotoxicity and by making amphotericin b in liposomal form or in lipid formulations it intends at decreasing lesser nephrotoxicity to reduce the in vivo toxicity of broad spectrum antifungal drug amphotericin b various lipid formulations of amphotericin b ranging from lipid complexes to small unilamellar liposomes has been developed and subsequently commercialized these structures these diverse formulations differ in the serum pharmacokinetics as well as tissue localization tissue retention and toxicity the lipid formulations of amphotericin b have been shown to reduce parent drug nephrotoxicity while retaining the drug's activity providing better therapeutic index for the drug Amphotericin B is one of the most toxic drugs used in antifungal therapy. It is obtained from Streptomyces nodosus, Streptomyces fasciaris, Streptomyces primprina, Streptomyces nosori. So which one is it? Here there is nothing much to guess, right? You need to know it on your own. So the answer out here is Streptomyces nodosus and Amphotericin B and amphotericin A, they both are obtained from streptomyces nodosus. However, amphotericin A is not in clinical use. Candidiasis is a fungal infection caused by the yeast from the genus Candida. Candida albicans is the predominant cause of the disease. Drugs that can be used to treat Candida infection are all except ketoconazole, amphotericin, drisofulvin, nestatin. Which one could it be? Here, except for amphotericin, all are used for dermatophytes, right? But candida, again, it causes both topical infections as well as systemic infections. So both kinds of drugs can be used in candida infections. The answer out here is Graciofulven. Candidiasis may be mucocutaneous, cutaneous, xenitourinary, gastrointestinal, or it can be full-blown candidemia. The treatment options includes echinocandines, azoles, and amphotericin B. So Graciofulven is the only drug that is not used out here. It is used in dermatophytes and it's not useful in case of candidiasis. The antifungal agent that is used only topically is amphotericin B, ketoconazole, graciofulvin, tabinafen. We already have been discussing about amphotericin B being a, the systemic antifungal drug. So there's no way it is just used topically, right? Ketoconazole was the first oral drug, oral antifungal drug to be discovered, right? Graciofulvin is something that is used for topical infections, but then it's still taken as a, taken orally with fatty foods, Tabinafine, again, it is used in case of onychomycosis, but then it's not just used topically, it is again taken orally. The, this one is quite confusing if you don't remember that ketoconazole has fallen into disuse because of hepatotoxicity reasons, right? Ketoconazole was the first oral azole to be introduced clinically. Now it is recommended for topical use only owing to hepatotoxicity and its role in endocrine disruption. Uh, 
it has been banned in many countries for oral use, and some are in the process of banning the use for system infections. Now, ketoconazole is increasingly used only as for topical therapy. The oral ketoconazole was withdrawn from European and Australian markets in 2013. Okay, the pollen antifungal agent, amphotericin B, causes deficiency of which of the following ions? We dealt with the, with the similar kind of question, right? Which has got the same answer. We, say, we talked about it causing hypokalemia. So the answer out here is potassium. Amphotericin B, its mechanism involves altering the fungal cell wall permeability or fungal cell membrane permeability by binding to ergosterol in the lipid bilayer of the cell, right? While binding preferentially occurs in the fungal cell walls, the drug can also attach to cholesterol in the mammalian cells and binding of amphotericin B to the renal tubular collecting duct cells causes development of pores which leads to leakage of potassium with resultant hypokalemia. Which of the following is not an antifungal drug? Okay, out here, you might feel that it's quite easy, right? And that ketoconazole and cyclopyrox, they are both antifungal drugs. But then are you sure about A and B? If you already know that A is a drug, clofazimine is a drug that is used in the treatment of leprosy, then you can spot it out that this is not an antifungal drug. Otherwise, on decalinic acid, it is an antifungal drug, right? But then this is not so much commonly used. Let us have a look at undecalinic acid. Undecalinic acid is unsaturated fatty acid derived from castor oil. And undecalinic acid is found naturally in human sweat. It is su suggested that many organic fatty acids, they exert fungicidal or fungistatic actions. Undecalinic acid also possesses antifungal properties, but it is never used on its own for antifungal uh, uses. Salts of undecalinic uh, acid are used in topical over-the-counter or mixture products for antifungal therapy. Zinc undecalinate is an example of topical antifungal agent that treats skin infections such as athlete's foot and relieves itching, burning, and irritation associated with the skin condition. Uh, Cyclopyroxolamine is synthetic broad spectrum antimicrotic agent with inhibitory activity against dermatophytes, candida species, and tyrosome obliquiria. So clofazimine is a phenazine dye that can be used in, as an alternative to dapsone in the treatment of sulfone resistant leprosy. Its mechanism of action may involve DNA binding. So the answer out here is clofazimine, right? The antifungal agent which inhibits ergosterol biosynthesis is griseofulvin, amphotericin B, 5-flucytosine, ketoconazole. So which one is it? Graziofulvin, it interferes with magnetical function, right? So this is not the one out here. Amphotericin B, it causes formation of ergosterol associated pores, right? So it does not inhibit the synthesis of ergosterol. Flucytosin, again, we said that it's an anti-metabolite drug that inhibits RNA and DNA synthesis. Ketoconazole is an azole. It inhibits c 14 alpha demethylase enzyme, right? that is involved in lanosterol synthesis, which eventually helps in formation of ergosterol. So the drug out here is ketoconazole. Ketoconazole is an azole drug that inhibits c 14 alpha demethylation of lanosterol in fungi, which interferes with the synthesis of ergosterol in fungal cell membrane. Right? Amphotericin B is known to cause formation of pores in the ergosterol, so it does not inhibit ergosterol biosynthesis as such. 5 flucytosin is fluorinated pyrimidine antimetabolite antifungal drug that is related to anti-cancer drug 5-fluorouracil and it inhibits DNA and RNA formation. Griseofulvin is the fungistatic drug that interferes with microtubule function thereby inhibiting the synthesis and polymer polymerization of nucleic acids. Let's just look at another question. 
Drisulfurvin is an antifungal antibiotic that is used in the treatment of several fungal infections. However, Drisulfurvin is not useful is in one of the following. Identify the case. Tinea capitis, tinea versicola, tinea cruis, tinea pedis. We are seeing the same question, but from a different angle earlier, right? So the answer out here is tinea versicola. In all other cases, Graciofulvin can be used. So Graciofulvin is useful in various fungal dermatophyte dermatology conditions like tinea barbi, pedis, corporis, capitis, cruis, unguium. But however, it is not effective in case of tinea versicola, where ketoconazole, terbinafine are considered the first line agents. The antifungal antibiotic amphotericin B's toxicity can be reduced by combining with flucytosin, injecting the drug with dextrose, incorporating it in lip liposomal complex, and combining it with flu fluconazole. Again, the same question, we'll see it earlier from a different angle, right? So the answer out here is incorporating it in liposomal complex. To reduce the toxicity of amphotericin B, it has been made in lipid complexes to liposomes, right? So these are the way in which the toxicity is reduced for amphotericin B. Nowadays, they are also trying to make nanoparticles of amphotericin B so as to reduce the toxicity. Cryptococcal meningitis is a serious fungal infection of the brain and a spinal cord that can occur in people living with SIB. It is caused by a fungus called Cryptococcus neoformans. This fungus is very common in the environment and can be found in soil and bird droppings. Which of the following is the treatment of choice for cryptococcal meningitis? Ketoconazole, turbinephine, itraconazole, amphotericin B. Okay, out here, ketoconazole, we already said that this is not used orally anymore, right? So this is out of question. This is just used for dermatophyte infections. Uh, Turbinephine is something that is used very much for onychomycosis. So it's not used in cryptococcus meningitis. So the two options remaining out here are itraconazole and amphotericin B. However, the answer is amphotericin B. Amphotericin B with flucytosin is the standard treatment for cryptococcal meningitis. Fluconazole is effective alternative to amphotericin B for as primary treatment. Single drug therapy with either drug is most effective who are at low risk for treatment failure. Okay, that is all. Thank you. See you in another lecture.